I would be lying to you if I said I was not worried about this matchup. Johnny Walker, in my opinion, is resurging his career. I had written him off at one point. I said he doesn't belong in the top 15 of fighters. He's too uncontrollable, too crazy of a fighter, and that leads to his downfall. Well, guess what? We saw a little bit of composure from him. Moment you see composure for Johnny Walker, you realize athletically he's a tough matchup for anybody, bro. You have to put him on his back, and you cannot allow him to use his athleticism to win the fight. And if there's any guy that can do it, I would argue it is Magomed Ankalaev. But my first question to you is, we saw Ankalaev be uh, susceptible, excuse me, um, to leg kicks, right? So given that Ankalaev was susceptible to leg kicks in his last fight, Johnny Walker can stand his ground, just kick away at Ankalaev's legs until he forces himself to shoot in and close the distance. That's when you catch him with the knee. That's when you drop the elbows on him. Is that what we're seeing right here, or is Ankalaev way too high level and technical of a grappler to fall into those basic traps? No, I, I think that's exactly the plan for Johnny Walker going into this one. And and to be completely transparent with you folks, I was almost hedging my bets on Johnny Walker for this one. I almost threw some money on there just because Johnny Walker is that resurgence of that fighter. We've seen him be the, the caterpillar turned into the butterfly that keeps hammers in his hands. And this dude can fight in multiple different ways. And, and that's why I like the style that Johnny Walker is bringing to this fight. Now, is Magomed Ankalaev... Uh, a very technical grappler where he's able to avoid that stuff. Yes, all day long. We've seen him prove it, and we've even seen him eat leg kicks and still be able to implement his strategy. Now, what does worry me is when Johnny Walker's blasting leg kick after leg kick after leg kick, and the next thing you see is a front kick right in your face. That worries me a little bit because of the athleticism and the speed that Johnny Walker presents. I think that right there, that speed, that athleticism, the unknown uh, that Johnny Walker can turn a switch on, that I think is going to be the, going to be the biggest problem that Magomed Ankalaev is facing in this fight. What about you, Derek? What X factors does Johnny Walker present that's going to be that catalyst that might get him the dub? I think Johnny Walker poses a lot of different threats in all honesty. One, we have to talk about that reach advantage. My man has like a seven inch reach advantage on Magomed Ankalaev. And I think the biggest threat that he poses is if he stays within himself and he does not force the action, he does not find himself in a position where he gets his back taken, where he flails himself into some like terrible, awkward position. I think that is what we need to see if we're going to see a Johnny Walker victory. Now, what I don't want to see is what we have seen for an example, Johnny Walker versus, uh, uh, Krylov, Nikita Krylov. There we go. That's the person that I'm thinking of. Bro, that's a very high level matchup, and it's very similar to this matchup right here. Nikita Krylov was able to put Johnny Walker on his back multiple times and hold him there. That has to be the key to victory for Magomed Ankalaev. Not sitting, trading, standing, and trying to kickbox with him, but control him, put damage on him, and submit him or knock him out. But it worries me. I think of all of the plus money dogs we have here, Johnny Walker, in the oddest of ways. He is the one who gives me the most pause, and it's scary because Magomed Ankalaev, AJ, how long have I been saying? Dark Horse of the Division, future champion. Johnny Walker, the guy that I wrote off, he's going to be the guy to beat him? Like, come on. What do you think, bro? I mean, am, am I on to something right here, or am I overthinking this? Oh, no, you're absolutely on to something, Derek. That, and and uh, for the, the sake of the competition, I almost went with Johnny Walker just to see if I could sneak one up on you. But it's too close to be playing those kind of games right now. So that's why I went with Uncle Live. I do think he's a smarter bet. But I do think also at the same point, Johnny Walker is probably the best live dog we have on this card because of that switch that I was talking about that he can flip. He can go from being composed, calculated, cool to being a wild man hitting you with spinning back fists. Uh, hammers who who knows because johnny walker is that wild man it's going to be an interesting one i do think the the favor does go to magomed uncle live i'm again i'm hoping for the dog match though right here brother now i've been writing down just like as the week goes on i'm just like kind of looking through the props and just seeing what stands out to me like oh when i take a look at the lines i write them all out and then i look at it and i say okay well, what is that doing right there one of them was plus 600 magomed uncle live submission i said huh they got no faith that he's able to take Johnny Walker down, take his back, submit him, arm triangle him, arm bar, whatever, right? They don't have any any confidence. The odds makers, there's something that I don't know. Why do we favor, not we, but the odds makers favor plus 140 TKO for Ankalaev over that submission? And do you see free money hanging out right there for us? 
I actually do, Derek. I didn't expect the plus 600 for the submission to come out in this one. Uh, because of the ground game, I think, that Magomed possesses, we might see a submission here. I, I, I personally, uh, if I'm just pulling at strings right here, the reason that's a plus 140 TKO uh, prop for Uncle Live is because of the name he carries and the perception about the, you know, the Russian style of fighters, the smash style of fighters. So I think that goes into a lot of that. It might be something the odds makers know that we don't, but I do see a lot of value in that plus 600. Johnny Walker might be the only uh, MMA fighter, and, and folks, this was in, you know, in his uh, pre-UFC career. He might be the only fighter to get knocked out three times in a fight but this is a different fighter that johnny walker is nowadays we'll see if he can uh, survive the knockout i really like that plus 600 submission that's funny i was hoping you were going to bring that up yes that is true <laughs> yeah it was knocked out three times in the same fight so incredible durability right there um but i also think the other reason why and if i'm being honest is like if you just you study a little bit man walker's never been submitted not in the ufc at least so um it's definitely kind of like a, a good point on why um let me just take a look and make sure that I'm accurate right there. He has. Clitson Abreu submitted him. Besides that, besides Clitson Abreu submitting him, he hasn't been submitted, right? He's getting knocked out or losing a decision. I still think that that's a very intriguing prop that I would lay a little bit of money on just to see. But I feel much more confident just in a pure Magomed on Kalaya victory. Minus 350. I don't know why, AJ. It just feels too steep to me. It feels like this should be closer um, odds. And when I'm looking at the live odds right now, it hasn't changed. Minus 350, plus 275. Come back for Johnny Walker. Give me Magomed on Kalayev. I don't feel great about it, but I do think that if his plans for him to be the champion of the division, he has to win this fight. And I think that he's going to he's gonna uh, have what it takes. So I got on Kalayev. AJ, how you see it? Yeah, I see it with you, Derek. I like Uncle Live in this fight. I do think in order to make the splash he wants to make, he's going to need to get a finish. But I respect Johnny Walker just a little too much right now. We'll see if I, you know, I eat my words in the post show, folks. Tune in to catch it. But I'm going Uncle Live plus 240 decision. Awesome. Awesome. All right.